Three, two, one. Hey, internet friend, this is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe and the Synergy Lifestyle Academy. And I've got somebody from over in the West Coast. Her name is Elizabeth Yarnell. Did I say it all right? You did. You did. Yay. So how's the weather out there in Denver? You know, it's beautiful today. It seems like spring might be finally coming. I wish. No, I live in Minneapolis, Minnesota and go for little walks. We got a little marsh and stuff and it's kind of nice this time. The little buds come out in the trees and pretty soon you know there's going to be flowers coming out. And the tulips and I like spring. I'm a big advocate of spring. I do too. <laughs> I do too. I've had the, a picture of some early daffodils up on my Facebook page for a while now. <laughs> <laughs> in anticipation. In how, long have you, how long have you lived in Denver? Actually, I, my family moved to Denver in 1971. Oh, wow. So a long time. And then I went away for, oh, about six years for college and a bunch of travel and stuff like that. And then I ended up coming back here um, in the mid-90s. That's the way it works sometimes. I'm uh, back in Minneapolis. I've lived in the same house for 53 years. Then I got married. We moved to the west side of the cities. And then we thought, we're going to go and live somewhere else. So we moved out to Asheville, North Carolina for a few years. Oh, how was that? It was good, but it's, it's, a, it's a different vibe down there in the Southern area. It's just uh -huh. really different. And then my wife kind of missed family and stuff. So we were there for about two and a half, three years and came back. Now we're back in Western suburbs again in Minneapolis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you got, you got kids or fur babies or anything like that? I've got both. I have um, two teenagers, a boy and a girl, and a rescue fur baby named Kylie Rue. Kylie Rue. Ours is mm -hmm. Kingsley. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, you got to have those little companions. They're, they're funny sometimes. I remember once, it, once I was watching television, I crossed my legs and I was watching television and the, the dog was up in the corner and he crossed his legs. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you, you may see Kylie Rue pop up on my lap. She's kind of a lap dog, so we'll That's have to see. That's good. I like to do these things spontaneous and natural and authentic and genuine and sincere. So if that happens, that's life. That's things I happen. love that. We won't edit it either. This is going to be raw and real. <laughs> raw and untouched. So I was reading up, and you're basically a naturopath, right? I am. I am a traditional naturopathic doctor. I'm board certified, and I run a nationwide clinic where I develop customized anti-inflammatory protocols for people. De describe that. What's a custom? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I actually have a three-pronged approach that is very effective. I would say a lot of my patients have autoimmune diseases or autoimmune symptoms. Basically, people who come and work with me are people who have been dealing with with issues that doctors have not been able to resolve. So it might be migraines, it might be irritable bowel syndrome or, or digestive issues, um, acid reflux even. It could be uh, joint pain, fibromyalgia, it could be arthritis, it could be mysterious things that maybe have funky names if some doctor has diagnosed it or hasn't been able to diagnose it. So those are all symptoms of inflammation and my specialty is removing inflammation from the body. And I do that with a three-pronged approach. And the centerpiece is a customized anti-inflammatory diet, which I develop using a very scientific state-of-the-art uh, food sensitivity test by a company called Oxford Technologies, Oxford Biotechnologies, excuse me. Um, and that really tells me exactly what this person should or should not be eating for inf inflammation in their body. And then I have uh, the other two prongs are addressing digestion through targeted digestive enzymes and removing any hidden parasites because I really believe that hidden parasitic infection is at the root of most people's chronic inflammatory issues. You know, it's interesting because a lot of people don't realize like just one little food, like, an, like a food allergy. I'm pretty healthy. I don't really have many allergies and stuff like that. I can kind of eat whatever. Mm -hmm. But some people, they're very sensitive to certain things. And I, I'm, I mean, I'm not a doctor, but I just look at it as there that, that consists of chemicals and there must be some kind of chemical imbalance that they're just not up on. And it's really hard to figure that out because can you imagine all the different types of foods, all the different kinds of things that go into breakfast, lunch, and dinner? How, how do you isolate that and find out you shouldn't be eating now almonds? <laughs> 
Exactly. Exactly. That's why this test is so revolutionary and so valuable because in the olden days, we used to have to start people on a radical elimination diet, maybe pare them down to just eating rice and chicken and pears, literally pears, for mm -hmm. two or three weeks to kind of clean out their body. But the problem with that is, first of all, that person ends up feeling very hungry and very deficient and deprived which they are nutrient deprived after following that diet. And oftentimes what I find with this food sensitivity testing that I use is some people are sensitive to rice, chicken, or pears. And in fact, myself, I am sensitive to both rice and pears. Mm -hmm. So for me, it would have been almost impossible for me to figure out what was going on in my body and how to manage my own autoimmune disease. I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis in 1999 after I went to sleep one night as usual and I awoke the next morning blind in my right eye. Wow. And that was what started me off on my path into natural health and to trying to figure out how to make my future better because 80% of MS patients have significant physical disabilities within 10 years of diagnosis. And I was just about to turn 30 at the time. I didn't want to be in a wheelchair by my 40th birthday. For sure. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm really into natural. I don't really study health and stuff like that. I kind of go by if I have a craving for something. Like if I'm craving sugar, there's something on that's asking me to do that, you know? So how do you know how do you know what somebody else is needing? That's kind of what I was getting at. Is, that, is it all done through that test? So my practice is very scientifically based. There's no guesswork. I don't say, oh, you know what? Some other people had problems with, say, gluten. Maybe you do too, and you should just cut it out. And then you cut it out. Well, maybe it solves your problem. Maybe it doesn't. Or maybe there are other factors. In fact, I've never met a gluten-sensitive person who only has gluten as one of their problems. Um, really, this test is unbelievably helpful. It allows me to have a very scientific basis to my practice. So I work with patients all over North America, and this allows me not to be anywhere in the same room or this, even the same region as somebody and design the right diet for them. So sometimes the most surprising and most innocuous seeming foods are what's causing the troubles for people. For, for myself, for example, lettuce is one of my most inflammatory foods. Really? Lettuce. Who what would is it have thought? What's lettuce? It's a leaf with water in it. So you can't even, can't even look at the actual food and say, oh, well, if it's lettuce and could it be the fiber? Could it be the nutrients in the lettuce or whatever? I don't even know. And it doesn't really matter. It's just my body doesn't right. like it. That's, a, that's the thing is the body is very, very complicated. That's why... Like I'm not an advocate of diets either because someone says, okay, do this diet and you take a cup of this and a pinch of that. And then you're, that works for some people, not necessarily the rest of the population. So I think it, it's good to make it personal because everybody's different. Even though our chemistry is basically the same, it's different. Right, right. And in fact, each person's gut is absolutely unique like a snowflake. And what might be right for one person to be eating say almonds, might be absolutely the wrong thing for somebody else to be eating. And there's almost no way to figure that out by yourself. Because as you said, in the course of one day, how many different, how many different substances are you ingesting? So let's just start kind of for me, for example. Okay, so I started my day with, with my decaf coffee. So there's coffee, but if I had regular coffee, there was also the caffeine in the coffee. Um, if I put cream in it, there's the cream and well, what, what else is in the cream? Is it a flavored creamer? Um, and then did I put any sweetener in my coffee? So for me, I put um, co pure coconut milk and pure cane sugar in my coffee. So then let's go on to the next step. Okay, well, let's say somebody's now having a bagel for breakfast or something. Okay, well, they had the bagel. Is it the wheat in the bagel? Is it the yeast in the bagel? Is it the sesame seeds on top of the bagel? Is it the cream cheese? What is already now how many ingredients have we listed that have come into your body within the first hour that you've been awake? Right. Does it also matter like even what region that stuff is created in? 
you know, there's going to be coffee beans from Brazil and there's going to be others from Vietnam or there's no, be, not necessarily. You know? Although eventually somebody may be able to fine tune that to that point if they find, um, so once we clear out, it's, it's basically a six month program to really clear the inflammation out of your body. And once you get to that point and you start to, to try to see, well, is my body settled down enough and has my tolerance threshold risen enough to be able to allow me to have something that I previously couldn't tolerate? Maybe it was coffee. For me, maybe it's caffeine. And then I might say, okay, well, maybe I can have one cup of caffeine um, and maybe, or maybe I could do caffeine and coffee or caffeine and chocolate, but not caffeine and coffee. Or maybe like for me, I can't do any caffeine at all. Okay. Even still. It's never going to come back for me, probably. So all that stuff, it, it seems like it could be really, really complicated. But if a person knows how stuff works, like yourself, then it's probably not so complicated. Like my wife is a coach also. And I'm an advocate of coaches because oftentimes the individual cannot see that other stuff. If they're blind to it. So someone that's eating is, you know, they're knocking out Snickers candy bars or something because they're good and they're not that fat. Maybe there's not a problem, but maybe there is, you know? And like, are there different levels of like peanut, aller peanut allergies? Are they more extreme for some people and less for others? So uh, what I really deal in is food sensitivities, not food allergies. Okay. So if you are anaphylaxic allergic to peanuts, I am never going to encourage you to have peanuts. That I don't want sense. your death on my hands. That makes sense. Um, <laughs> seriously. I'm going to look at, at what causes inflammation in your body, but not necessarily what causes death. So there are four types of food sensitivity reactions and peanuts are type one type of food sensitivity reaction that cause um, anaphylaxis. So whereas I'm sensitive to peanuts and they cause me um, inflammation, which for me manifests as some wobbliness in my gait, because I have MS, so that's an MS symptom. Um, but it's not going to manifest an anaphylaxis for me. Oh. You know, I do a lot, a lot, a lot of these interviews from people from all walks of life, not just the wellness area, but also, you know, the career and finance and relationships. And it's amazing to me the knowledge that people have that's like, I mean, where do you learn all this stuff? <laughs> <laughs> well, right. That's what I've devoted my life to learning for the last right. 20 years since I was diagnosed. And um, so I studied and studied and gone to school and gotten degrees and all of that stuff. And I've written books. All of that is all part of that body of knowledge. How do you, what's your process then? Say someone said, I've got this situation and I want to work with you and have you figure it out. What's the first step that they end up doing with you? So let's say somebody comes to me because they have, let's say, Graves' disease or hypothyroidism and issues with that, and they haven't been able to get it under control. So the first thing they would do is they would go and they would book a, a complimentary naturopathic health assessment with me. And the website to do that on is a bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash E-Y assessment for Elizabeth Yarnell, E-Y assessment, bit.ly dot E, or bit.ly slash EY assessment, and you book that complimentary natural health, naturopathic health assessment. Mm -hmm. And then we have it on the schedule and we have a Zoom call or a phone call for 45 minutes where you give me your extensive health history and you tell me everything that you can remember about your health, really from the time that you can remember your whole life. And from there we go on and we see well, are these issues that you're experiencing, are they due to inflammation? And if so, then you may be a good candidate to work with me. And so if you are a good candidate to work with me, then you sign up and I send you a big welcome kit that has all of your supplies in it and all of your directions. And you start off with the herbal parasite protocol to get rid of any critters that might be <laughs> complicating things in your body. It sounds weird because in America, we don't think parasites are that common uh, because that's really what our medical system has been telling us. But the truth is, is that the CDC believes seven out of 10 adults worldwide are infected with, with some sort of parasites. Oh, and it, makes, it makes sense. They're so easy to get. You can get them from sushi. You can get them from 
digging in your garden. You can get them from your municipal water supply. You can get them How from do you know if you've got parasites? Right. So some people, the problem with parasites or, or the identification of parasites is that our parasite testing is notorious for false negatives. So you can get a stool test, it may or may not show up, but even if you have, if you have a positive, that's great. Now you know for sure you got the parasite. But if you get a negative, probably 50-50 chance you still have a parasite. Um, a lot of people experience some um, digestive issues when they get parasites. There are two phases. There's an acute phase and a chronic phase of parasitic infestation. In the acute phase, you might call it Montezuma's revenge if you were traveling. You might call it a 24-hour flu. You might say, oh, I just had this weird, maybe I had food poisoning. Um, I've just been kind of having some diarrhea. Some people vomit. I never do, but a lot of people do. Some people get migraines. Um, some people have fainting episodes. My husband, for example, when he gets infected, he faints. Um, uh, some people just have more chronic issues, chronic body aches, body pain, um, sometimes weird itching. There can be almost anything wow. can manifest from so parasites. That makes a lot of sense that a person like does that evaluation thing with you first. It's, it's kind of like, I like you using analogies. Seeing I don't know much about the health world, there's the car world. So being able to go to the mechanic and say, my car is making this noise. It sounds like a pip, 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 pip. You can't explain it, but the mechanic knows exactly what it is. I remember, this is a little story, but I remember I had a car that wasn't starting and I called up my, uh, there was a friend of mine, his dad, her, her dad worked at a, at a car dealership. He was a mechanic and he knew about the cars. And he told me to take the distributor cap back when there were spark plugs and wires. And he told me to turn it to this angle and now I'll go try and start it. And it just started because he knew exactly what to do where I was like, what am I supposed to do? There's so many wires and stuff. I well, love that analogy. Knows, yeah, the, yes. the expert knows exactly what that weird stuff is. So if I go to you and I say, God, I've been really feeling dizzy lately. And sometimes I go to the bathroom and it's so runny and stuff. I don't know what's going on here. I just got back from Cancun and I don't know what, what's going on. I was feeling good on the beach. And you write, and you know exactly what's going on, right? <laughs> yes, you know, I, I love that. In fact, I may use that analogy. I am definitely like that, um, that mechanic or that, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, a not assessor. Yeah, well, definitely a specialist. But I am that expert who understands how the car should be functioning and what's going on if it is not functioning the way it should. Because there's a lot of stuff that happens to a car. I mean, your average person gets in, turns the ignition on, and drives away. They just need to know about the steering wheel and the signals and the gas pedal and the brake. They don't need to know about the, the pistons and the spark plugs and the wires and the coil and the drivetrain. Eh, the mechanic knows about all that stuff. So there's all sorts right. of little things that you know about that most people don't. Exactly, right. And normally, if in a perfect world, our bodies are functioning the way they should. And the human body is just this amazing, is. amazing machine where we have all of these redundancies and all of these fail safes and, and things to help us, help us compensate when something else is going wrong. Um, so sometimes it can be really hard to identify where the problem actually lies. This is sort of on off topic and it's timely and this video will be out there for who knows how long, but what is your take on this coronavirus thing? Is that, I mean, is that okay to ask you that? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Obviously I'm quarantined at home with my family and I really am looking at this like any other virus. This is a virus. This is not a virus that we've had exposure to before, but it's still a virus. And so in a lot of ways we can treat it and address it just like any other virus. And so really the best things, and I've written some, a lot of newsletters about this and some blog posts about how to protect yourself from it and how to recover from it if you actually get exposed. So the best protection against viruses, the same as if it's the common cold or the regular flu, um, is to make sure that your body's in fighting shape. So you wanna make sure that you're system. loaded up. 
Yeah, your whole body really, because it's all holistic, right? Yeah. We can't just, we can't pull out the immune system and separate that. Um, so vitamin C is really essential. Um, and in fact, right now, if you feel like you're exposed, you can do high doses of vitamin C and the Chinese have been using intravenous vitamin C to fight the COVID virus over there. And that's been very effective. Um, most people who are quarantined probably don't have access to that IV vitamin C, but you can take high amounts of vitamin C. So really like 5,000 milligrams um, a day or even break it up into two doses per day um, if you feel like you've been exposed or you feel like you're coming down with something, that's a mm -hmm. really good time to start pumping the vitamin C. And then along with vitamin C, you want to make sure that you have vitamin D as well, because that is an under, um, an underappreciated immune vitamin that most Americans are deficient in to begin with. Yeah, they got to so, get outside. Well, outside is great. Sun. Um, if you're gonna bake in the sun, but even so, like especially right now, it's not a bad idea to supplement with vitamin D3 at mm -hmm. fairly high levels. So I would say 5,000 IU of D3 daily. Um, and then if you feel like you're sick, I've seen some protocols that are calling for 50,000 IU of D3 for three days. Be sure you don't take it for very long because it, D3 can be very toxic if you overdose it for too long, but just three days worth of 50,000 IUs of wow. D um, that maybe can help knock it out. And then what is another an vitamin, IU? yeah, what is an I use IU? an international unit. International unit, good to know. <laughs> some vitamins are dosed in milligrams or micrograms, some are in international units. It's, I don't know why they're not standardized. Um, and then vitamin A. You don't standardize anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. We're the, we're the U.S. We're still using pounds and ounces. <laughs> I know. Isn't that strange? Now it's and inches and feet. <laughs> Anyways. Yes. It is, it's pathetic that we're not on the metric system, but so it is. <laughs> Maybe someday. Who knows? Maybe someday. There's only so many things that are within my power to affect, and this is not one. <laughs> Okay, so then the step two thing would be, because they, they took that thing, they says, you know what, I got these issues. I want to work with you. How do we do that? So go over to that, that bit.ly slash EY assessment and book an appointment. Or you can go to my website at elizabethyarnell.com. And you can always contact me through there and see all of my services and what I offer. Um, I am not the natural, the normal naturopath who has a brick and mortar office and sees well patient visits and things like that. I really work specifically with people who are looking to get rid of inflammation from their body. Do you do um, talks and things too? I do. I speak all over the country. Okay. Um, right now I'm speaking a lot about my cookbook, which is called Glorious One Pot Meals. I saw that when I was poking around looking for stuff. And this is a this is a cookbook that introduces a method of cooking that I invented and patented a while ago. And it makes it super, super easy to, to make quick and healthy meals without even a lot of forethought and without really fresh foods if you don't have access to them. So especially now in these times when when we may not be getting out to the grocery store on a regular basis and we really have to be focusing on what we have in our pantries and what we have in our freezers, we can still whip out delicious and, and nutritious dinners um, within under an hour. And this is, is that so on easy. Amazon? It is on Amazon, right. Glorious One Pop Meals. And What's if you go to again? Glorious, Glorious, like hallelujah. Glorious. If I see that there's some glare. Maybe if I put it in front of my face. I'm going to post it. So. Glorious yeah. One Pot Meals. Yes. And so if you go to Glorious, G-L-O-R-I-O-U-S, one O-N-E, potmeals.com, Glorious One Pot Meals.com, I'm giving away a, the ultimate checklist for stocking your pantry and freezer. And you can grab that and Good get timing. this great list. <laughs> so, and then I'm posting lots of little quick video demos where I'm literally going to my own freezer and pantry and saying, what do I have? What am I going to cook in my glorious one pot meal tonight? The most recent one I just did was, um, uh, what did I end up calling it? Red chili lemon salmon. 
and oh. I took frozen salmon fillets from my freezer and I took frozen green beans from my freezer and I had some potatoes because I've got a bin of potatoes and onions um, to stock up for in this whole thing. And, and then I used a chili pepper mix that you might put in like a chili stew. Mm -hmm. And um, and then I put some sesame seeds. I feel like there's one more thing that I'm not thinking of. My wife just oh, made lemons. salmon. I was just going to say, my wife just made uh, salmon last night, and she was she really loved it. She was so proud of herself. But she did lemon slices and baked it with the lemon on top of the slices, or the salmon on top of the lemon slices. That's exactly. And if you watch a video, you'll see my lemon slices are all on top of my salmon. I wonder if she salmon. got your recipe. She went on the internet and got it. I wonder if she got it. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. So the great thing about my cooking method is that everything that I just mentioned was rock solid frozen right out of my freezer. I didn't have to oh. think ahead. I didn't have to thaw anything. And it still only needed to cook for less than an hour. Wow. Okie dokie. Well, it's, it's Elizabeth Yarnell with two L's at the end dot com. I will yep. post that with the video too. Excellent. Wonderful. Well, I enjoyed this little conversation with this and maybe we'll do another one down the road. I will uh, post this and put it up the internet and put it on some blogs and things and send uh, the link so you can get a hold of that. And uh, we will talk later on. So I appreciate you taking the time from Denver. <laughs> well, Brad, thank you so much for having me on your show. This has been so much fun. Okay. Thank you, Elizabeth. Peace. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>